Hello, this is old Mr. Kent of MrKent.com, and I've been telling my life story. And if you want to get caught up on it, <laughs> there's a link at the end of this video. You just click on that. Uh, I'm uh, 82 years old, and uh, so far I've got up to about 1986. And so uh, if you've been watching my channel and following, you'll notice this is the street that we cross when we're planning to go into town to the park and uh, we're not going to go to the park today but I want to check a few things and so uh, <laughs> we're going to go uh, almost well actually you'll see where we're going to go so in my last video I, I was really mean and unkind because I left what people are calling a cliffhanger. Did I get an airplane? Yes, I did. The guy was, uh, uh, he was hard to deal with. <laughs> I had to, I had to uh, really give in a lot, but I got an airplane and uh, had to refinance my house in order to help pay for it. Plus I traded my sailboat and, uh, and then the refinancing came in handy because then I had money for lessons and uh, fuel and things like that while I was taking my lessons. So I got that and I'll put a picture up of it. It was a, a 1960s uh, Cessna 150. A Cessna 150 is a tricycle landing gear like this, like this trike right here. It has a steering on the front as we go around the corner. And uh, uh, there's a different kind of plane which I'll talk about in another video anyway and uh, it carries two people uh, so it was uh, my pride and joy so I went to the FBO and uh, scheduled some some lessons and of course the guy that was my instructor we didn't get along very well <laughs> he was in mid 20s and it, see in order to get your uh, to be an instructor you have to get your pilot license and then commercial license and then uh, get the instructor's license so you have to take a lot of uh, tests and you have to do a lot of flying spend a lot of money <clears throat> in order to to get there so uh, he was kind of proud of himself and you know that's an accomplishment but he was teaching an old 40 year old guy <laughs> how to fly an airplane <clears throat> excuse me and so uh first lesson uh he just he takes it off and he lands it and he just has you learn make sure you can fly straight and turn right and left and all that kind of stuff and so and then as you get into the lessons then he lets you take off and land and uh one thing about it is uh, uh i was like so many things i'm blessed with i guess i don't know it was built into me uh when i'd come in and land I don't know how many times he said, damn, you're good. <laughs> and so uh, I've had several people compliment me in the, when they ride with me in my plane. But anyway, that's another story. So uh, one lesson after another, I scared them one time. What they do is they have you, they, uh, you get up there, you know, you're 5,000 feet and uh, safely above the ground. And then uh, they have you put on a, 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 a shield so you can't see the instruments. And then uh, the instructor puts the airplane in all kinds of strange configurations. And uh, uh, then when you come, then he says, okay, and you lift up the shield and like the, the earth, you're looking down at the earth and, and halfway upside down or something like that. And then it's your job to, uh, to straighten it out. Well, I, I, I straightened it out quickly and uh, bolts are, are not 100% always uh, uh, the right size of the hole or, you know, you got to be a little clearance there. So the strut that goes out to the right wing where it connects to the fuselage, it's, it, it, it just made a, a big snapping sound. <laughs> it's, it was scary. And he says, don't ever do that again. What I did was I, I, uh, I jerked it into position rather than slowly uh, bringing it into position. And then they teach you how to, 
I don't know if you're not familiar with airplanes, a stall isn't anything to do with the engine. A stall is when you get going so slow that the plane no longer is, doesn't have any lift. And so then the plane just starts to, you know, go down. And so they, uh, <clears throat> they teach you how to, how to get out of, you know, the stalls and stuff. So did a lot of that. <clears throat> and then, uh, <laughs> uh, we did, uh, well, let's see. We were going to do night flying. I'll do that one. We're going to do night flying. And so go out to the airport. Now, the guy that sold me the plane was cricket, okay? He wasn't honest. And uh, <clears throat> so we'll get to that in a minute. So um, I, uh, we, we were cranking the engine. And uh, now uh, an airplane engine has a carburetor on the bottom. It's an updraft system, <clears throat> and that way it's not in your way when you're flying along. And so, uh, for some reason or another, it backfired at night and started a fire in the carburetor, and the gas is dripping down. And so, uh, uh, he, he said, just keep cranking. That way, it would keep the flames from coming out and getting into the airplane. And so, I cranked and cranked and cranked, and he ran and got a fire extinguisher and put it out. <laughs> And so then he said, well, we're not going to go, not going to go fly in tonight. You want to make sure and uh, uh, clean things up because a lot of soot and stuff like that. Plus the fire extinguisher stuff. So the next day I went out to the airport and uh, started taking things apart, uh, making sure that the, uh, the carburetor was clean and everything like that. <clears throat> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, put it back together and started up and it ran fine so then I thought well this was a summer day nice summer day well I think I'll go ahead and uh, uh, go for a flight so I get in a plane I take off and I fly around a little while now I have to explain that the the Kennewick Airport was originally built during the war Second World War to train pilots who are going to be landing on aircraft carriers. So the, the runway goes along, and then at the end of the runway, it just drops down like that, which would be s similar to uh, flying up to a, a aircraft carrier, nothing beneath you, and then all of a sudden you're on the deck. <clears throat> so that's what it was, and uh, that and they you can still, never mind, I won't go in there. Anyway, and so uh, I was, uh, and then down below that part, uh, there was a park where people were, it was like a Saturday, I think, and people were uh, in the park playing ball and flying kites and just a nice day. And <clears throat> I mean, a whole bunch of people were in that park. And as I was coming over it, I could see, I could look down, I could see. And so I pulled back on the throttle and um, coming down. And uh, <laughs> as I as I'm coming down and I'm, uh, I got the throttle pulled and it's pretty much just idling, then all of a sudden the engine dies. And the weirdest thing, when the engine died, we'll go over here, when the engine died, it just turned out that the prop came up in front of me like that. And with all the people in the park, my first thought was somebody's got their hand up. <laughs> I can't help myself, that's the way I was. I thought somebody's you know, and then all of a sudden I realized, no, that's the prop and the engine died. And I'm, I'm coming into the airport. And so, uh, as it turned out, I was able to get it started again before I, before I ran into the, uh, <laughs> to, to the ground. And was able to land at the airport and everything was fine. Then I took the carburetor off because the idle, uh, idle jets in the carburetor were clogged and I never thought about cleaning those so that's why it died anyway so uh, I'm down here to where I wanted to find out sure enough uh, uh, see they were gonna close the road that w that I would normally have taken into town a year or two ago uh, it's right out here and from where we came where we uh, where I came from it, it comes down here and you go into town well, they said it was going to be closed over the weekend. And uh, so I thought maybe they'd have this road open to go into town. But uh, I see there's traffic on the road. 
And so it isn't closed like they said it was going to be. So that's interesting. All right. Well, we'll turn around. Okay. So anyway, that was a <laughs> that was an exciting flight. <clears throat> and then uh, one of the things he told me, he said, "You should get some sunglasses." Now I I never have enjoyed sunglasses, although I got them on now. <laughs> But anyway, these these are clip-on. So I went and bought myself some sunglasses so I'd look like a pilot, you know. I don't know why he wanted me to buy sunglasses, but anyway, so I bought them. He said you might need them, and so uh, we we had to do a cross country. What is a cross country? Is where you go from one airport to another, and <clears throat> they train you on how to file a flight plan so that you we take off from Pasco and we went to Spokane, Washington, and. Um, And then, if if for some reason you don't show up when you should, uh, then they send out search parties for you. That's what the flight plan is for. And so, you file a flight plan, and uh, then uh, you take off and you go to the other airport. So, cross country is where you uh, you do that. You you take off from an airport, and so we took off. Uh, I think it was a Saturday or something. We took off uh, from Pasco, and uh, it it's about 120 miles up to Spokane, so it didn't take too long. Mean now, meanwhile, you know, I'm paying for the instructor and, and by the hour, and so we land in in Spokane, and I had to refuel. Uh, I don't know why I did, but anyway, he probably told me to. He was mad at me on that day because. The guy that sold me the plane, it was, I mean, there was a lot of stuff that I had to work on as time went by. One of the things that I hadn't worked on was the radio. When you would take off, and a plane's climbing like that, the ra the the radio would slide out of its tray on in the instrument panel and start coming towards you, and you had to push it back in. Well, he was, you know, he didn't have a plane at all. <laughs> But he was real critical of my plane because of all that. So anyway, <clears throat> and then other things,、uh, he didn't like my plane. So he didn't have one, but he didn't like mine. So anyway,、uh, we get up there, and uh, uh, he was mad because of the radio problem. So I went and I pulled over the fuel、uh, pumps and reloaded. Meanwhile, he said he was going to go visit a friend. And it was a nice summer day, and it was hot. And I'm sitting in the plane after I get it fueled up, and I'm waiting, 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 and、uh, he doesn't show up. About a half an hour went by at my expense, and finally he shows up. <laughs> so anyway,、uh, so then we take off. And then he wanted me to leave. When I left Spokane, he wanted me to go over to a, a, a little town called Othello. <clears throat> and so、uh, we、uh, we took off, and I had it on the chart and everything. So、uh, we're going along, and I kind of got, I, I, you know, back in those days there was no GPS. You went by the chart and what, what you saw on the ground, and that's all that all that you had. Nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, it's really, it's really nice. But anyway, so you had all these、uh, marks on the ground that you could easily mistake,、uh, make mistakes with that. So anyway,、uh, I kind of got off a little bit, and then he started、uh, criticizing me, and I, and you know, I was just had never, <laughs> had never、uh, done this before. And so、uh, then he had to point out where, o- which direction it was to Othello, and it was a real smart aleck thing. So then <laughs> I got—I don't know why. Let me take a look out here. We're going to take a look. No,、nope, it's like the same old road. I don't think they did anything. Like they said they were gonna. Okay, so anyway, 
uh, the funny part was, is it was getting dark, and uh, you know I I'm looking at the instrument pedal, and I we actually I found I found Othello, and we we went home. Everything was fine, and uh, so anyway, so. Uh, we got, uh, we're going along and it's getting darker and I'm looking at the instrument panel and I can't hardly see the instruments. And he says, well, you could take off your sunglasses. <laughs> I forgot I had sunglasses on. That was in the days before I wore glasses. So anyway, uh, so I got my, I, I, I got my, my uh, cross country uh, flight in and that was one of the steps towards getting your, getting your license. Uh, but I'm starting to run out of time here. I've got a lot of flying stories. And if you don't want to hear flying stories, let me know. And I'll move on. But I've, uh, I mean, I, I got, I ended up more than one airplane I had flown. Oh, I don't know how many. I was certified in, in uh, a couple of extra planes. And it was, just, it was a fun experience for me. But it could be boring for other people. So let me know if you don't want to hear all their all the airplane stories I got a million of them but anyway it's time to go because uh, I like to keep my my videos about 15 minutes or so and uh, I've, I've uh, kind of got about as far as I want to go in this video so this is not a cliffhanger when we come back on the next video um, let's see what's that story gonna be I have one I can't remember what it was <laughs> I'm just too old so anyway at this point, I just want to thank you for watching my videos, and God bless.